All right, so in this video, we're going to talk quickly about the different kinds of congenital heart uh, defects. And I've drawn this little picture of the heart. As you can already tell, this is the, I'm not going to label this because I think it's better for your brain to understand the diagram and not, and not worry about words. But this is the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. As you know, this is going to be the pulmonic artery, and this is the aorta. And anything in the middle connecting the two, this is going to be your patent ductus arteriosus, okay? So this is the whole idea right here. Now, there are different kinds of shunts. Uh, some of these shunts are going from right, left to right. So left to right is not so bad because left means that the blood is oxygenated and it's going to the right side, okay? No big deal. Uh, life is good. So uh, left to right shunts are usually less problematic at least in the beginning, as you can see, one of them, the atria is going to be called the atrial septal defect. The one in the ventricle is going to be called the ventricle uh, septal defect, VSD. The one in the, um, the one uh, that is connecting the, uh, the two uh, aorta and the pulmonic vein, that's called the PDA, uh, patent ductus arteriosus. The only problem here is that eventually what happens is that you get something called and Eisenhower syndrome, which is when your left, your right side of the heart becomes so strong that the pressure reverses, and instead of going, that it can actually go to the, um, it can go to the left side. So this is where the problem occurs. That eventually you can have the blood going this way, and this is what is pro problematic. So I've drawn this surprised person. Um, this is what it becomes problematic when the blood is going from the right to the left ventricle, right? Because the right side is, uh, it doesn't have oxygen and now it's going to the left side where it's gonna be all the way over your body. Um, the thing to remember um, for the atrial septal defect is that you're gonna have a fixed S2. Uh, usually you know that the, the um, you know that uh, why it fixed S2? Usually S2 is a sign of your aortic and pulmonic uh, closing valves. But because, but because now there's not much difference between inspiration and expiration, because again, because of this septal, because of this septal channel, anything that is going into your, uh, you, in a, if, there was, if, this, if there was no septal, Anything that is in the atria will actually stay in the atria and the, the stuff that's in the ventricle will stay in the ventricles. Uh, here, because the right and the left are mixed up because of the septal defect, you're not going to see any changes in inspiration or expiration. This is why it's called a wide fixed S2 because usually S2 changes depending on whether you're inhaling or exhaling. Uh, here, the S2 is going to be fixed. And if you want to know why exactly, because there's no blood differentiation in the ventricles. Um, so that's why it's going to be fixed. All right. And then you have the VST, which is a uh, right to left shunts. Again, VST is, um, is going to be the same thing. Eventually, you are going to get... Um, You're going to get um, Eisenmenger syndrome, which is you're going from right to left. That's the problem. You can have a lot of tension in the pul you are going to have increased pulmonary, uh, pulmonary hypertension and uh, clubbing, and the right right atrium pressure is going to lower. PDA, again, is great in the beginning, but eventually what happens is that uh, you can have, again, the Eisenhower syndrome, which is that the blood that should be going to the lungs to be oxygenated is going to instead go to the aorta. So you can uh, have this system going on. One other thing to note is that the O2 saturations in all these right to left shunts is, is initially going to be high. O2 saturation initially is going to be high. Um, and this is usually late cyanosis. Cyanosis and increase O2 saturation. Hmm. 
Now let's talk about um, the right to left shun. So these are the ones I have drawn. The first one is called the trilo uh, the trilogy of Felit. Fe trilogy of Felit. The thing to remember for that is that basically it all starts with the pulmonary um, the pulmonary valve that is the problem. This is what causes the hydrophobia of the right ventricle. This is what causes the aorta to be shifted away. Um, and so forth. So the important thing to note is that the pulmonary valve is the primary cause of all the four defects, which are number one is again the pulmonary, number two is the aorta, number three is the ventricle septal defect, number four is again the hypertrophy. And I've driven I have written hypertrophy or I've indicated hypertrophy by this zigzag line. Um, the other one is called so this is the, the transposition of the great arteries. So this is very important. As you can see, that anything from the lungs is just coming back to the right it's not and anything from the body that's coming anything from the lungs is coming back to the right heart anything that is coming to the body is coming back to the left so in order for for the person to survive you need some kind of shunt like you need a um, a shunt here you need a, a pda a pda v, vsd or asd you all you need some kind of shunts uh, so this is kind of an urgent situation this is an asap situation um, the other one is uh, this uh, called uh, persistent uh, kernis arteriosis. This is again fail to separate. The, the last, the other one is a pulmonic atresia. That's why you've seen I've, driv I've drawn it in this uh, in this uh, in this kind of a thing because atresia means absence. So the tricuspid valve, valve is not there. So it's not there. Essentially, the heart is like this, the left ventricle is not even really there. It's like it's not there. So in order to survive, you obviously need a um, VSD. So you need some connection here, you, or you need a connection here, so that eventually the blood goes this way. Um, the butt blood goes this way and then goes out and then goes to the lungs. Um, this one is again, this is called the co coarctation of aorta. Coarctation means that, coarctation means that uh, there is some kind of a stenosis. So the first one is uh, the childhood form, the infantile form is the steno, the, the ductus is above, and this is the adult form. And the other form is obviously more survival because you can have uh, collateral circulation. No, sorry. This is the this is the infantile form. Excuse me. Infantile form, and this is the adult form. And the adult form is important because the collateral um, the collateral circulation can develop. The other signs you will see in the coarctation of aorta is again the hypertension in the upper extremities, uh, the hypotension in the lower extremities. You're going to see the rib notching because of the collateral circulations, and um, and the other thing to remember with coarctation of the aorta is that it's more familiar in Turner. So this is not meant to be a big. This is not meant to be like a first pass overview, but this diagram should give you an idea of the different, an easy, simple way to understand the different kinds of um, congenital heart defects that are there.